Welcome to Analyze This, the finance and economy show for millennials. My name is Honey Ogundei, and with me is my co-host, Tunji Andrews. And today we're going to be chatting about healthcare in Africa. So the healthcare industry is one that's super interesting, not just because we all need it, but because it's one of the fastest growing industries in Africa. In terms of, we're always seeing those um, announcements coming from donor organizations about the amount of money that's being invested, not only from governments, um, but from multinationals. Um, from even private companies. From private companies yeah. as well. And even like the growth of the HMO sector. So there seems to be like a lot definitely going on mm -hmm. when we think about healthcare. But on the other side, patients are still sort of suffering and lots of people are still dying today, especially in Africa, from diseases that they don't need to be dying from. And, and just a short fill of the system not working as it should. So Tiji, what's your take? Like, are you... um, So I, I think my, my most recent experience with um, the health sector is in me trying to get a, a, um, a health insurance plan right. for my family and I and um, uh, wife's uh, where my wife works. Uh, I, I just didn't feel the cover was what I wanted. It was not like bougie enough for you. Yeah, so I wanted to get mine. And um, I went, I spoke to a couple of guys yeah. and they were like, ah, that your hospital, eh? You cannot, you cannot cover it. Except you are ready to pay like a 1.2 million per year. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What kind of baby boy hospital was it? It's, I can't call their name. But it's like top of the range. Like yeah. Where, so, and, and you know, for me, it was, it, it was really disappointing seeing how much, how much money goes into the industry and you can't give me the kind of cover I want, even though I'm prepared to pay a premium. But not that kind of a premium. But they were prepared to give you the cover that you wanted. You just no, no, no. What, what they wanted to do was, if I paid that, I might as well give the hospital the money and, yeah. you know, cover myself. So, you know, that that's not real insurance cover. That's covering me, you know. So, right. uh, um, and what I wanted was proper, proper cover. We've been hearing things like, you know, hospitals are comp turning away patients because yeah. the HMOs are not paying for the services. Sometimes you get some kind of cover and you only get paracetamol cover. Yeah. I'm still distraught that people are still going to the hospital like in 2017 and they get turned away because maybe they don't have enough money or the hospital is asking them to pay a certain amount like right then um, before they can get treated i'm really happy that we're starting actually on the health insurance note because i think that that's like a super you know mm -hmm. a super important point i think it's too few people in africa and in nigeria have like health insurance so i see it like every day in my work i work a lot with artisans tailors a lot of times people get really ill and they don't have any insurance, especially when they're self-employed, to cover it. And it can be really heartbreaking when you have like a serious condition and you're trying to rally around, trying to raise money to, you know, to pay no effectively for your healthcare. Yeah. We don't have like a national health care system, for example, like, you know, no, in we places do. like the UK, they have quite good We ones. do. It's Even just, infrastructure to be able to, you know, treat some of these things. I, I think we, we, we keep hearing in 2017, all oh, the first blah, blah, blah surgery was just done. Oh, the first blah, yeah. blah, blah surgery was just done. And a lot of the times, you, you just kind of wonder why. Why are we just here now? Yeah. I saw a video, uh, a picture. I'm not sure. I can't authenticate if it's in Nigeria. But there was a theater and they were using phones. Mm. The lights of the phones oh. through the... To, to. I'm like, to see. Yes. So I'm like, that's oh quite my God. That's quite, that's quite that's grim, you know? So I'm super excited to welcome a friend to the show. Um, she's doing amazing things in healthcare in Nigeria, literally saving people's lives. We've just spent three weeks traveling on a tour around Europe together, so we've gotten quite close. So I'm super excited to welcome Tammy Giwa Tibosun, who's the CEO and founder of Life Back. Welcome. Hi. Welcome, 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 welcome. So, I mean, the first question is segueing, why blood? We could have blood. done anything That's else. We could have done... Way. Liver, we could have done skin, kidneys, right. why blood? Why is blood important? Um, so, so there's a personal story and then there's a ah. big story. So the big story is one in three people entering hospitals will need blood. So it's a massive problem. Mm. Like It's like the, the center, the lifeblood of hospitals, right? Yeah. So people with, people who are having a baby, children who have malaria, um, cancer patients, kidney, dialysis you know like basically it's surgeries is a significant amount of people entering mm -hmm. hospitals who need, need blood. blood so it's a huge problem now i personally care about maternal mortality and maternal maternal um health right um and i have it's a long story so i, I won't yeah. bore you guys with it <laughs> so i have a personal uh, commitment to maternal health now the biggest killer of women in women between 15 and 45 years old in on the continent 
is you know maternal maternal death <laughs> right and then the, the the one the first reason why they die the biggest reason why they die in uh, childbirth is because they have something called postpartum hemorrhage mm -hmm. so they basically deliver a baby and then they start bleeding and then they bleed and bleed and they die so it's um so a significant problem so i decided to try to solve that Hmm. that's really and so what do you think is like so what's the state of healthcare today like in nigeria and africa is is the system broken is it trying to get fixed is you know what we it's broken <laughs> i think most people will say it's broken you know you have the people um striking even the people who are staying yes. there's constantly strikes well, why are people um, trying to even leave <laughs> what <Monster. laughs> Why would they? Oh, well, uh, she's sorry. here. I'm here. You stay here. in Nigeria. We're not House workers. <laughs> no, but um, so people are overworked. I think that's the biggest thing. They're overworked. They don't have the right tools, and then they're over underpaid, right? right? Underpaid, and then some 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 are underappreciated, especially mm -hmm. nurses and you know support staff. You know mm -hmm. people don't appreciate them, and they don't appreciate how much it takes to actually you know do a lot of this work. So people are leaving. The biggest one that gets the headline are the doctors we leave, you know, because, yeah. you know, we think that doctors are, you know, the leaders of a health team, mm -hmm. right? So when they leave, it's a big deal, but everyone is living. Doctors are living, pharmacists are living, people who can leave are just getting out of the country. Yeah. And, the, and I think the problem is, so if I look at the system, I think there are two systems. There's the private system, and it has its own problem, and then the public system, and it has its own problem. The thing that they both have in common is healthcare financing. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that I think African countries have. But if there's been a lot of money coming into their bill and Melinda Gates point in money for malaria, mm -hmm. polio, all sorts of NGOs from across the world. And even like money. foreign donors I mean, as right. well. So all where does that money go? So, so it doesn't go into financing, it goes into programs. Right. right, so Bill and Melinda Gates care about oh. a few things, and they fund Finance those things, things and right. they do like you know NGOs come in, but it's not fundamental financing so the entire to system to build the system to yeah. build the system up. Like literally everywhere in the world that has a good health system, they figure out one thing: it is how do we finance the healthcare mm -hmm. system? How do we create enough pool so that everyone is covered? Right. right. So if you bring your one naira and maybe you know your higher income and you bring your ten naira, higher income, <laughs> <have a> platinum <laughs> card, and then he brings his one point five million. Five million. Right? I bring, bring my ten, 10 naira. naira. I'm a startup, <laughs> and I bring my one naira. Because I'm a super small startup, and we put all those money together, we can cover everyone, mm -hmm. and that's one thing that i think we haven't gotten right and and you know and that's through taxes and that or? is frustrating because right. i that right. was the principle to which i was trying to get health care right. for myself right. I'm, right. I'm thinking right. if we have a pool of people across the world right. people have people across the the, uh, the country then i should be able to plug in somewhere right. and get and the right, right kind of health care right. i want right. now it's not just about health care right, right? I want healthcare in a particular way. I want right. to deliver it in a particular way. Right. So I'm looking for the hospital with probably an ambulance, you right. know, oxygen. And right. I, I deliberately make sure I check these things before right. I sign up to a hospital. Right. And then you're asking the HMOs, can I sign up? And they're telling right. you no. Right. Yeah, but I think like, money. I mean, I know your problem is serious, making sure that they have all those things. And they, and they are important. Mm. But I think even a bigger fundamental problem is the fact that just the majority of people have access to like zero, no. zero. Yeah. Healthcare. zero healthcare. If they fall sick with something as simple as malaria, mm. they are going to die. Or they try to give birth to like a baby. Yeah. There's a chance that they will die. Problem, and so right, how absolutely. do we fix, how does how does financing get fixed in other countries? Is so, it like the government or is it individuals? I think all the countries, the countries that have done it well, it's usually usually the government. The government is the one body in a, in a, in you know in a, in a system that can compel you to pay something for your health care. I cannot a private company cannot compel you to do it. The mm. government must say you must pay this particular amount of your income every year, no matter how little it is, mm. to the pool. Yeah. So that we can now cover everyone. everybody. Mm. So the more you make, the more you pay. You know, the little, you, you know, the less and then you everyone pay. is covered. Yeah. Yeah. And there will be lots of people who pay who don't yeah. get sick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the money that's there can go into, into like, taking care of the people, people who, who are sick. Who are sick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's how, like, you know, the NHS in the U in, in, the, sorry, UK. the UK, that's what it do. The German healthcare system, the French one, Swedish Singapore, one really Swedish, well. yeah. like Swedish one is like when you go, it's like it feels like an American hospital. Like like everything is all there, it's state right. of the art, and it's completely right. free. Right. The one thing, the but one you pay thing, a lot of taxes for it. Yeah, exactly. And and part of the taxes is actually you know healthcare you yes. know, coverage. Uh, th this is one of the things that America is currently going through now, actually, yeah, to figure out Obamacare. its way. Yeah, exactly. Obamacare is like. 
you know, the step before the single payer. They usually call that system single payer. Okay. It means the government is, is the single collector mm -hmm. of all healthcare savings mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. payments into the pool, even, yeah. right? And then uh, it pays hospitals, right? You know, a certain amount, so they call it single payer. Uh, and that's the best system the world has come up with so far. So in Africa, are they like shining lights or beacons who, or countries who are doing it particularly well mm. yet? Or <laughs> across like <laughs> South Africa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I mean, of all, so if you, if you use what I do as sort of like a measure of how healthy your health system is, mm. or even take Matana Health, mm -hmm. you can see which countries are doing well and you okay. can see why they're doing well. Right. South Africa is the one that has like a voluntary... Um, and, and universal blood system. Right? It is the one that maternal mortality is very, very low. Um, but I think I think that's key. I was actually looking in South Africa, there was an insurance company that actually focuses on insuring people with HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. exclusively. Mm -hmm. And the company was doing really well mm -hmm. and it was really profitable because they turned the whole notion of insurance on its head and they said, no, I, I instead of insuring the healthy, because you don't know the risk of them yeah. falling mm -hmm. ill, insure people who are, you know, have so, an ailment yeah. and then we can better work with them mm -hmm. so that they have better health care. I, I think I think the South African understanding of insurance is a, a lot, lot better than the mm -hmm. way it is in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you have people preparing for their death, you know, mm -hmm. their their um, yeah, burials, mm -hmm. paying mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you know, people paying for their car insurance. They have all sorts of car mm -hmm. insurance. Yeah, yeah I, like think I, I, I think I, I, financial services are a lot, 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 more, lot developed. more developed yeah. in yeah. South yeah. Africa. Yeah. Than and so what are some of the ways that you think that we can start to fix, like, especially if we just take Nigeria, like, like how can we get started? So if, right. if, if, the, if, if the president is in the UK <laughs> seeking health care, <laughs> how do we kind of get moving? I mean, I mean that just but, doesn't give you hope, right? It yeah, just, it just really is like, well, so I think it's well if you're sick you want to live right yeah, so and and, and if so you are president, president, yeah. president we want to live yeah and he's our president we want to live so when, it's all fun and games talking yeah. but when it's your turn and you're not feeling well yeah. you're going to go of, where it, it just kind of becomes real to you yeah. right yeah. like you will so, go to like your bougie clinic I'll you know maybe go to my own <laughs> so, so like um, the two things I if someone makes me like you know, Minister of, Minister of Health, Health today, tomorrow morning the two things I would do is invest massively in NHIS Okay. We actually have NHS. We have we have a version of NHS. So that's like a free healthcare service or a so national it's a, healthcare it, service. It's a it's not a healthcare service. It's a health pooling service. Okay. Right. And it, right now, it's been in existence for almost 10 years. Wow. It's only covering 1% of Nigerians and not covering them actually very well. Okay. Right. And mostly malaria covering. And there's free immunization, there, right? Free immunization and things like that, and it, it really covers very very you know the smallest amount of people, one percent of the country, and usually they are most of them are uh, you know civil servants, and so it doesn't work. So what I would do is massively Fix invest it. that system, invest in that system. But then there's something interesting about Nigeria's healthcare system, like about sixty, depending on which city it is, um, between sixty and seventy percent of all healthcare um, services actually happens in government hospitals. Okay. So the government is, one, trying to pull, and two, trying to deliver so, services. Okay. And, and we is it usually free there, or is paid as well? It's a mixture. Sure. It's a yeah, mixture of free. It's, it's, it's technically it's free. Subsidized, yeah. It's technically free, free but, but then there's so many other things services. you have to pay. Oh, and yeah. then I think once you start thinking about, you know, um, specialist care, then you have to pay. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, the one thing I would do is get the government out of direct that delivery, is. right? Like, government should not be running hospitals because it is not good at it. It's been running it since Nigeria has existed yeah. and it hasn't run it very well. So, you know, privatize a, a few of these hospitals, but then do the pooling and do the single-payer system so that you can actually sort of, you know, um, create policy around what how much each procedure should cost and create uniformity uh, across board. Mm -hmm. And then also, when you have a system like that, Government hospitals will also get a lot of, you know, revenue because then the government I mean, will be paying them know, for services. If we're just fifty percent of Nigerians, right, and mm -hmm. that were pulling into that mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. pool, mm -hmm. you know how reduced um, health insurance would be in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We're talking about say, close to ninety million people mm -hmm. pulling in every month. Mm -hmm. Even if they are putting in a hundred naira mm -hmm. every month, well, you yeah. want to like in the, the networks, right? Everybody's effect. putting putting mm -hmm. in so about exactly. hundreds of well, putting Absolutely. in thirty k. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I mean, like everybody's putting in. <laughs> right. it, it ends up being like a huge pocket right. for right. the network. So right. if there was a way in which we can effectively pull right. like a system. So like why that. are they not doing it? Mm -hmm. What exactly is the problem? Because I mean, even the the top tier 
hospitals in Nigeria, which you want to think are the top tier. Mm. A, a, a friend was talking about the fact that his mom had been ill for a while mm. and she had been one of those big mm. hospitals in Lagos that she had been there for, I think, a month or two. Mm. And then they finally had to airlift her out to London because I think she's British and all of that. Mm. So the ambulance had to come all the way to the runway to pick her up. Mm. And then the paramedic, not a doctor now, the mm. paramedic realizes that, hold on, the woman has liquid in her lung and, you know, relieves the, finds a way to create an incision and mm -hmm. removes the liquid. Mm. Woman gets to the hospital and walks out. She's not been able to walk. The reason why they had to airlift her and, you know, bring the ambulance to the, to the runway was because she couldn't walk. She gets to the hospital and she walks in. They missed it. Yeah, they missed it, yeah. She, there's many cases of that that we used to. I don't, I don't hear like as much of it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I there's stories, you know, as someone who works in this system, I get stories like all, all the, time. the time. We help hospitals find what they need for you, for your healthcare. Um, there are some essential products that they will not stock. So blood has a short shelf life. Mm -hmm. So if they stocked it, they would really lose a lot of money and mm -hmm. it's capital intensive. Mm -hmm. Oxygen is capital intensive. So actually have an oxygen plant on campus in your hospital is a lot of you know investment and a lot of these small hospitals don't have that money so it's very capital intensive uh, vaccines is also capital intensive you have to plug yourself into like huge you know pools, you know, huge pools. like you know how can a, a small hospital have a contract with a you know you know PNG or, yeah. or Pfizer or True. you know or you know or Bayer and all this other huge so it's just not these things are capital intensive and these things are, you know, short shelf life and they just don't have the capacity to have it, mm -hmm. you know, when you need it. So that's where Life Bank comes in. We help, we help them find everything they need in the right condition on time. We use technology and we use logistics and we actually deliver it to a hospital in the right condition. And, and, that, and that's what we do. And I think one of the key things about what you're doing as well is you're really using technology to solve the problem. That's so awesome. you basically like connected life banks or blood banks mm -hmm. to hospitals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which other ways are you really seeing technology like and how do you think technology can play a role like in healthcare, especially mm -hmm. in Africa? Mm -hmm. I think technology is going to be the, the, the key to, a lot, to solving a lot of this problem fundamentally. Before you can actually do... Um, a public pooling system, a single payer system, mm -hmm. you need to be able to uniquely identify everybody, everybody in your country. To know, okay, this person is the one that paid it and this person is the one that's taking, taking it out. Yeah. You need to be able to identify and we don't know that. Like, we can't do that right now. So technology can help there. us in doing... We're getting there. There's BVN, there's, you know, national insurance, uh, yeah, national, national ID. But you need to be <laughs> Say able to... Say so sadly. Right? <laughs> Leave us with some positive. So what are the yes, good things? Yes, positive. Because <laughs> otherwise we're all feeling like... I'm right, just really very so sad right what now. What are some of the good things you're seeing coming out of, like, healthcare? I don't like... Your so, company is definitely one of right. them. Right. I was going to say that. Yeah, I'll give you that one. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, apart from what we do at Life Bank, which is, you know... Make sure you have all the things you need. There are lots of awesome things. There are investment in you know there's a branch group that recently brought you know as a one billion fund, one billion dollar fund for Africa's health system. One so, billion, a billion. <laughs> I think we need to move to healthcare. <laughs> I buy fashion. Uh, so like uh, you have in those sort of investments. You have technology, and the interesting thing about technology is it helps you leapfrog a lot yeah. of the capital intensive so part. Parts, yeah. Right. And if, if you're gonna start a host, like a, a clinic today, if you put technology as part of you know the the, the, the infrastructure. infrastructure of your clinic, yes. you're gonna reduce the cost of how to. I mean, of course, it's still going to be expensive, but you're gonna reduce, reduce the cost. A lot of cost. So technology is going to really help with things like that. And then there are small companies like mine that are doing a lot of different things. You know, mm. that that are doing backwards integration and and services for the yeah. people who actually deliver healthcare. There's so also like, like new insurance companies, right, as well. Absolutely. Like looking at micro insurance. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The micro insurance play, the, you know, um, the big insurance company, the new insurance companies every day, there's when mergers, like I think Mansell merged with AXA, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and, you know, that really opened up a lot of different, you know, opportunities in Nigeria's healthcare system. But, but where we really need a lot of help and a lot of work is in the public sector. Thank you very much, Tammy, for being with us on the show. It's been one of those exciting, eye-opening, so and a bit sober moments <laughs> on the show. Um, I mean, you, you can basically join in on the conversation. Let us know what you think. Are you getting healthcare wherever you are in Nigeria? Are you waiting for a bougie hospital like Tunji's? <laughs> it's just cover. <laughs> but anyways, 
Um, just let us know what your thoughts are about the healthcare and if you're getting proper healthcare. Um, you can use the uh, handle, it's at Ndani TV, and also the hashtag is Analyze This. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Tunji Andrews, and also. You can reach me at Honey Ugunde on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. Just find me and chat to me. I'm here. And, and Timmy, Timmy. Timmy, I'm on Twitter all the time. Uh, Timmy, uh, Timmy Giwatuwoso, and also on Instagram and Facebook. And Life Bank, how can we? Life Bank, Life Bank Nigeria on Facebook, Twitter, um, and uh, what else? Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, so you heard it till next time, guys. Have a great week. Mm -hmm. Oh,